Yo, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs back with the Full Circle Podcast. Got my guy Dustin Yellowitz in this bitch. Hey, how, how you doing, doing brother? Great I'm to doing see great, you. Doing great, dude. It's been since high school. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a hot hard. minute, dude. You know what's crazy is you look the same. Same. Like you just have a beard now. Yeah, it's exactly the same. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Be rad, man. Mm. Be rad. Be rad, Jeezy. Yeah, BRG. I'm not Dizzy dude. D anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that's hilarious. What, yeah, what, decades ago. Do you just go, th- do you have a different stage name for your comedy or is it just Dustin Mine, Yellowitz? Dustin Yellowitz, man. Word. It's a na- dope last name. I've always fucked with it. Fucking yeah, it's, um, like a, it's like the color, only Jewish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. When I was a kid, I would, when you're young and you hear kids' names in classes and shit, mm-hmm. were we in the same homeroom a lot? We had like, a lot of classes together. We though. had a few classes and then we definitely had a few study halls together. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what it was. Year to yeah. year, yeah. That's funny, dude. So mm-hmm. um, I didn't know that you were doing comedy since you were 17, yeah. like stand up and shit. Hell yeah. What got you into it? Um, actually, stand up and, and comedy has been a big thing part of our family my father was actually a comedian as well mm. and um you know he's always uh, he yeah anna- you were always goofy yeah he, he mm-hmm. announced uh, wrestling when we were kids uh, for a monster factory and you know mm. called bingo for our synagogue and all that shit and then mm-hmm. he was actually one the first yellow it's to pick up a mic and tell dick jokes Word. Yeah. <laughs> that's so great can i, can I curse one I'm, I'm assuming i can right yeah yeah, yeah, right, yeah. fair enough and I, I love that joke that you posted today the the dick joke with yeah. the, the dude in the crowd <laughs> yeah. to me it's all about crowd work because yeah. i um, i started making music at the same time like okay. 17 18 and um, I danced before that, but I started writing for real after that. Nice. But um, but my last step, my next step is to f- master DJing, and okay. then I'm gonna do stand up too. Really? But um, you because I host up. a lot of shows, so there's a lot of breaking the ice and crowd yeah. work I have to do with. 50 Philly rappers. Okay. I got to keep everybody in a good mood. Hell yeah. So I can't just be like, yo, what's good, y'all? You got to be able to No, work I got to talk shit. That's I have awesome. to be goofy and shit. So I'm naturally doing crowd work already. Yeah. So, and I'm a writer. Do you usually so. throw a joke in while you're Yeah, while yeah, you're yeah. But That's I make awesome. myself the joke. Okay. I, mean, I always make my life. the best comedy. Like when something fucks up with the DJ, I just make the crowd say, DJ, fuck <laughs> up. And I take all the blame for it. Mm. So it's like little things like that. But it's understanding the nuance of the crowd work. And mm. it is... It is the confidence about doing it. Because yeah. when I see your videos of you doing the crowd work, mm-hmm. there's no sense of like, you know that jittery feeling that you get sometimes? There's no sense of I shouldn't be saying this. Yeah, it's, you don't even show it. It's what it. I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah. And it's what it, I'm feeling. Sometimes it, people can't hide that. No. And it's a, uh, because it's a natural feeling. It's a biological thing that people do, but there's a way that you can keep it yeah. calm and handle that shit. Mm-hmm. So I do want to commend you on that from the clips Thanks, I saw. Man. That's I dope. That. You're like really ripping it. I like it. I appreciate it. And I know that you're you're going to build from there. Fucking, um, how is the comedy scene out here in Jersey or Philly? Um, it's a little different from when I first started. Um, I took a little bit of a hiatus and I, and I came back and I've been working with uh, these guys at AC Jokes, my buddy Mike Merck. Um, they've been AC helping. AC Jokes. Yeah, they've been uh, they've been helping me get into the circuit a bit. I've been uh, hosting a few of their Berlin shows. Mm-hmm. That's is, always good because the ho- you get a minute here and there when you're introducing. Yeah, well, I usually you run a like a ten to fifteen, and then mm-hmm. if you run like ten, you do a little quip in between, mm-hmm. you know, announcing people. But yeah, I'm trying to get more feature and, and headliner spots because I got a lot of I got a lot of stories. Fuck yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that is that your set? Your style is more storytelling than I. You know, typically, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean. It, like I, I love making fun of myself and you mm-hmm. know and talking about things I've been through in, in a funny context. So yeah, absolutely. That's the best way. Humility and also, yeah, th- yeah. That's that's good because there's no ego involved with that. Yeah. But um, I'm not sure what my style would be yet. It would definitely be based around a lot of crowd work. Okay. I would definitely do a lot of that. But um, I would probably do like, but da those kinds okay. you know you want to do more like one-liners so, yeah, riffing yeah, yeah. you want to riff it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. more than a, more than a story you gotta find your voice man you gotta find mm-hmm. find the the type of comedy that yeah. speaks to you if that's comedy is scary like that's definitely as as a musician being mm-hmm. a drummer or rapper or singer there's nothing scary because it's just you and talking it's mm-hmm. like full-on judgment so that's why the only reason i compare it to hosting because there's a lot of goofy moments at these events where if it's a certain person that has the mic, it's going to stay weird and awkward in there. Yeah, for but, sure. So you have to be awkward to fix the awkward. That's the only way you can fix it. Mm-hmm. But um, so where do you where are you mainly doing them at now? Like, it, is there spots in Atlantic City? Uh, I haven't done any shows in Atlantic City yet. Uh, I've been doing uh, the shows in, in Berlin at Robert's Bar and Grill. It's oh, attached right, to right, Paris right. Catering. <clears throat> and then um, you know they're gonna work me up to the bigger rooms hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, I'll be going to their show. It's happening next Friday. Word. Yeah. Yeah. I um, 
What do you think about Texas? The comedy scene going on out there. The comedy mothership, and you have yeah. like the whole you know Kill Tony scene out there. That, yeah. that, I would love to do something. I would like love that. to do Kill That's Tony awesome. too. <laughs> That'd be yeah. awesome. That would be the one that I would love to. I feel like they try and gear it towards it people who'd, who've never done it before. They, I think they do. That like, mm-hmm. I, so what I hear is that they have two hundred signups. I'm sure you have to pay to okay. get a ticket to go or whatever. Well, it's different. You sign up, and then there's the show. They mm-hmm. keep them in the room. Ne- I think they keep them in the bar over there. But um, but it is a luck of the draw. You have to be out there a lot yeah. for it to happen. And I got kids, man. That's yeah, not yeah. Happening. You can't just go there every week. <laughs> That's or, not happening. Yeah, yeah. You have to be really lucky to get it, get some pool, or just get in the scene here and have it have it bu- bubble up like that. But um, or just make your own scene out here. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's all about. Just what you trying to do. Yeah, and constant content, and like it's it's art at the end of the day. It's not yeah. content. It's just cut into chopped forms. So yeah, it's yeah, sad that it's kind of gotten post- to that point where is, it has is, to be content. Yeah. Is that is that um, recorded from the from the building? Like, does Roberts record that, or did I you bring that. your setup? I record yeah, that. yeah, do that every show, dude. Yeah. Everything you. I need please. to get me one of these cameras, man. That's what I need. I yeah, I, that um, was all, all done on my phone. That's probably why it's all blurry. Mm-hmm. And, no, it doesn't matter though. It's mm-hmm. more about at least you have it. Yeah. At least you have it for real. Because when it comes to like. This it's different. It's um <clears throat> like Coco evolved when I got involved with them and they started shooting all this stuff for me. Mm-hmm. That's when um that's when I was like, okay, I see the difference in quality, but uh but at this time everything was also switching to reels. So yeah. shooting it like this where it's um horizontal, it's uh that's obviously for YouTube and shit, but to chop it up, you have to zoom it in and do all this extra shit and the algorithms are so different with what they push. They want you to use the app, not like Final Cut before it. Right. You know, they want you to add the. You gotta text. add a sticker in. You gotta put the right yeah. hashtag on it. And that shit looks makes it look ugly to me. You know, I want it to be clean. I'd like to get to the point where I can hire somebody to do yeah. that because yeah. I want to focus on mm-hmm. this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to focus on mm-hmm. you know finding out where people have been. You know, finding out what people are trying to do. I feel you. You know, and and working on my comedy and getting it out. You yeah, know? yeah. I don't want to focus on what stickers trending. You know, yeah, I don't want to focus what, on which fucking... hashtag I got to pick up. Oh, what you don't camera pick, lens you need? Exactly. All well, that I mean, shit. this that I don't mind because learning how to edit it's and stuff was fun. Yeah, it was fun to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. Now I'll always know how to do it. So yeah, yeah, why yeah. not? And you can put anything together at that. But Get everybody good enough should, at it that I can hire somebody to do it for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody should learn how to edit a little bit, just so, even for family shit. Computers just in general so you have it. I feel like I'm just like technologically <clears throat> inept. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's all been one giant learning curve. Yeah. How do you? So do you physically write, or do you like type it when you're writing bits or stories? So I do a lot of like silent driving, mm-hmm. and like I'll try and think of something. I'll bit I don't it out. Even in my listen car. to music in the car. Either. I mean, I do a lot. If mm-hmm. I get into like a certain, you were mood, bumping I'll when you pulled up. Yeah, hell yeah! <laughs> well, I, actually, I was listening to a, a friend of mine's podcast. Oh, where? Um, yeah, and I was. Uh, I do a lot of like silent driving and like I'll work on stuff or yeah. if I think of something funny I'll write it down and then I'll just write the thought down and then mm-hmm. later Branch on I'll look that. back at what I wrote down throughout the day like alright what can I make about this and yeah. then you know try and go into it and then I try and equate it to life because yeah. if it's not coming from a real place like what, what are you even talking yeah, about? Yeah that's kind of um, I guess I kind of did do it I have this um, side thing I do they're called buggy rants and it's just a minute of me bitching about shit that I hate okay so like where do all our socks go for example (laughs) like we always lose one of the socks they fucking disappear and I looked it up online and apparently the dryers actually eat them Mm. like it just goes in the the fabric just goes into the dryer but when I did that that turns into a bit you know Mm -hmm. I'm bitching like where the fuck are all my socks at like where do they go and that's that's a comedy bit that's there's something there you know so my rants can turn into a stand-up bit what i've noticed okay. you know just and it's actually a lot of comedy i've noticed is just people bitching just make sure it comes you know? from a real place no it always. is yeah no like always, you, those man. socks when i did that actually mm-hmm. I, I um dude i uh it was like right in the beginning of the pandemic and i ordered like two p- fucking packets of socks dude and one of the packets was just gone and this is actually an argument my wife and, and i have had before. they they disappear dude and Two, like six, seven months later, mm-hmm. I have like a trindle bed under my bed. Mm. I pulled that out. They were all under there. <laughs> so I must have like did laundry and like pushed the bed back. And so when I did that rant, that was from a real place. Like, yo, where the fuck are my socks? At? I'm not allowed to ask for another pack of socks. Like, if I, <laughs> like, if my mo- if my wife's at Target or my mom's out and she's and she's mm. shopping, like, if I ask for a pack of socks and my wife finds out about it, she'll punch me. In the face. Oh my god, dude, socks! <laughs> Nothing like a fresh pair of socks. I'll say that. So snug, they just the get white ones, on and then there. you light put the lighter. You ever do that when somebody's got a fresh oh, pair yeah, of white yeah, socks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's and just light the lighter shit. on there and see it. See it I used go to take up. those lighters and like make the flame huge. Oh, the crack lighters. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, I have one in the room actually. Yeah, that's um that's some Marlton shit, some pyro Marlton shit. 
How do you feel about Marlton? Did you like growing up there? I still live there. Do you? Yeah. I'm, you what know. town? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, what neighborhood? Mm. Yeah, I'm in Country Farms. Literally, I, I grew up in Country Farms, and I'm like in the same part of it. Look, That's I'm wild. Four blocks away, but I, I did a lot of traveling in between mm-hmm. growing up and yeah, before you went back. coming back. But I always say I didn't make it too far. Word. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm in, I'm only an hour away from there, yeah. but um, but it's it's the shore. It's way different down here. It's a good place to raise a family, yeah. man. It's quiet, and then you know, 15 mm-hmm. minutes one direction, you're in Philly, and or yeah. 20 minutes, or you know, Camden mm-hmm. and at the concert centers and. Mm-hmm. Whatever, man. Either you're near a bunch of shit, and then half hour away, you're at the shore. Yeah. So you enjoyed growing up in Marlton. Yeah, for Marlton the most was part. so weird to me growing up. Why just because it was just so uh, clicky, typical two thousands mo- movie. You know, like whatever those movies were like. Like not another teen movie kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like straight up like that. I, I just saw the sections off like that. But a person like you, you were in, you didn't care. You were nice to everybody. Chameleon, dude. Yeah, same with me. I was nice to everybody. Well, and the people who would be polite. If you but, meant well by me and my own. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And and you were down to party. We were. Yeah. We were all good. That's facts. Yeah. That's facts. Marlton's an interesting place. It breeds a lot of a lot of different people. But um, but I found your uh, your podcast from when you did one with Kyle Scott. Man. Yeah. So um, I watched like half of it. Did um, has he had on any of your stand ups or anything or any has any of your has homies gone? Yeah. Not yet. I don't believe. Yeah. yeah. When when hasn't. when are your ne- when's your next one? So I'm I'm not scheduled to go up uh, yet, but mm-hmm. I'm going to um, another AC joke show with my buddy Mike performing Mike Merck. He's mm-hmm. going uh, not. He's going this Friday. Word. Yeah. That'll be at the same spot, Robert's Bar and Grill. But uh, I'll get scheduled up soon. Word. Hopefully uh, hopefully within the next month or so. Fuck yeah. Well, I throw shows. They're all, I throw every genre. I haven't thrown any for a while. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we haven't talked since high school, but mm-hmm. um, not to not to be a pro, because I tell, this is my podcast. This is like, this is probably going to be episode like 48 or something. Oh, word. So I have, a, I have a lot where I tell different stories of what I do, but we haven't talked. So mm-hmm. I throw a lot of shows with multi genres, like different genres of bands, rappers, oh, yeah. singers, and shit. And I bring people together in that aspect. Like acoustic, all that too. But I would love to have you do a stand-up set at one of them. Like sure. if you want to do it in the middle of the show and the beginning, the end, I don't care when you want to do it. I'd, I'd like to put you like right in the middle. Just to, when today? No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> not today. Um, I'm setting the next show. It's been a, it's been like two, three months since I threw one. Okay. Location switches. I'm deciding where I want to throw my next event at. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I love you. Love Hell to yeah, have dude. you come do a fucking, fucking a ten, down. ten minute set. Ten minutes, John. Where are they uh, where are they usually located at? Some some of them are down here. Mm-hmm. It de- this is what I mean. It depends on the venue style that I want because everyone is a different vibe. Like there's an underground vibe here. There's like a established spot here. Depends on the look and the the vibe I'm going for. Okay. So like that's what I mean. The, the I've driven lot. pretty far for ten to fifteen minute yeah. sets, man. It's not a big deal. I, oh, you know. so do I. Yeah, as a rapper, like mm-hmm. when you get booked, they only book you for fucking. 10 15 minutes I've been to I've been to places where I'm not even allowed in the in the building. When mm-hmm. I was like 17 18 I couldn't go into the bars for the open yeah. mics. That's interesting how they let so that slide. The door guy the door guys would like stop you. Some of them would actually try and mm-hmm. do stand up. Mm-hmm. So he'd be like, "Hey, wait here one second. And then he'd go do his five. The door guy, yeah. Yeah, and then come back like, "All right, man, you're up." Yes, comedy is an interesting thing, dude. It's very weird. Have you had any like shitty reactions? Oh like, yeah, dude. Like arguments, like hecklers yeah, um, and shit. Not so much arguments. I would say I've uh, I've had to hecklers put a f- so. I've had to put a few hecklers in place. You know, um, who did we have? Who mm-hmm. did we have show up? I'll tell you about him later. But mm-hmm. we had somebody from high school show up to one of my shows. Yeah, yeah. And they just they just heckled. He's you? just like, I know you. Oh, in the middle, the dude. I'm in the middle of a set. Uh, you I'm don't want to name drop I'm it. I'm we, we can beep. We'll beep it. I'll beep it. Yo! Oh, clap it. I'll beep it there. But, right there. <laughs> but dude, right. I, he. All right. So he was a goober, <laughs> but you know he's always a good kid. And I'm in the middle of a, a story. I'm talking about getting arrested, and I'm talking yeah. about like a really big deal. And mm-hmm. he just in the middle. He's like, like it's a real story. He's like, I remember getting those prank phone calls and starts in the middle of my show. I'm about to tear him up. And then I recognize him. Uh, and then he, and he did it like, fuck with you. You're like, wait, I bro. It threw me totally Damn, off. Damn, See, that's threw interesting. Me totally off. I, I managed to get the punchline out in the whole, the whole, the whole yeah. crescendo of it all. Mm-hmm. But it was just one of those things you got to kind of play with. Like, yeah. it's like, it's like sales. Like I've been, I've seen 
all sorts of scenarios and met all sorts of customers and told me all sorts of reasons why they can't buy something. Yeah. Eventually, you get really good at navigating through that. Yeah. Just same thing with comedy, man. You're going to come across so many different yeah, vibes, of, like, rooms. Like, it's a, it's an uh-huh. older crowd at that at that Roberts place. You know, it's oh, and like, that's, some that's of my the jokes thing are tougher. Too. That's what's very weird about comedy because you don't know what crowd you're going to really get all the time. Got to gauge it. Got to yeah. scope it out. Like, if it's a quiet crowd, if it's like... Because the thing about my music is I make every genre. Mm-hmm. So... If it's R&B people, I'm doing vibey shit. If it's rap, I'm rap rapping. But then there's trap rap where people just want to mosh. Then I got to right. do hype shit, you know? Whereas comedy, if you're just a dirty comic, you got to find some way to... You have to let the, the mm-hmm. audience bond with you a little. Yeah, you have you gotta, to be... You can't just start off with dropping C-bombs and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to... And I've done that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it doesn't always work out well. Yeah. If it's the right crowd, maybe. If they know who you are and they kind of expect it, sure. But if it's a random, uh, random assortment of people that... Most of them probably aren't even there to see you, especially starting off. Yeah, they're there to eat. <laughs> yeah, they're there to eat. <laughs> I ain't never comedy here yet. Yeah, man. And that's the thing, too. You have to, um, when it comes to bombing, it's like, just like I said, the DJ fuck up thing. Mm-hmm. When it comes to that, you kind of have to call it out. Roll with it. You have to be like, oh, shit, I'm, 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 am I bombing see, right now? See, but like, in comedy, you don't want to just be like, oh, that joke sucked. And yeah. you don't want to, you, know, you just keep going with that's it. That's some people's just bit. Let some it, people's let, bit plays uh, with it yeah, like that. Yeah, that's not my style. I'm yeah, just yeah. going to say some off the wall shit. If you like it, you like it. If not, yeah. you know, I'll refine it for later and, mm-hmm. and keep going. Got to get it out. Got to, got to, you got to understand what it feels like to say it out loud. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do you run through your shit like, like as far as write like that's what I mean by writing it. Do you so you have the idea, you write it there, and then you just play it in your head and keep it there, and it's kind of different every time, or is it like word? Because you know how some comics have a set, and it's yeah. like that's what they do. So if depends. Like if I know I'm I got a forty minute set coming up, I can kind of wing a little bit more mm-hmm. because I have that wiggle room with time. If I'm a host and I'm supposed to do a tight ten or a tight fifteen and get moving and uh-huh. announcing people and I want to keep on the schedule. Yeah. You have to have a bit of a routine. You have to have those ones that you can time out yeah, in your brain. Yeah, pass. Yeah. Yeah. Well just like the one to two minute stories, the the, the little quips, the you know, mm. scope the place out a little bit beforehand and see if there's somebody you can fuck with in the front yeah. row. Yeah. Yeah, that's know? the thing too. If you go to a comedy show and you sit in the front, you better <laughs> Yeah, you better be looking, looking like some people do it on purpose. Some people yeah. just get shit luck, man. Yeah, they yeah, just they shit just luck. go up in there and shit. That's interesting. So the heckler, yeah, that's a whole other side because it's a rapper. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I've never gotten hecklers. Huh? I'm joking, fucking um. <laughs> but uh, but when it comes to rapping, it's like people hate. So you have to rap good, especially as like yeah. the typical situation with battle and stuff. But when it comes to performing. Like when you're rapping as a performer, but and then and then you're singing, it's mm-hmm. a completely different reaction that you get from the crowd. True. But then when you rap, sing, and then kind of do some goofy stand up in between it, I like I've found I found a way to mesh it. So that's why I'm like I'm just waiting for the right time to do my first stand up. I want my first stand up to be Got on Kill Tony cherry. straight up. I want it to be on Kill Tony, but that's like a long shot to be picked. They only pick like ten people per episode. I mean, South by Southwest is. In a couple of weeks, it is in Texas, right? The, mm-hmm. the Cole Tony ship. Yeah, it's in Austin. Mm. Hmm. It's interesting because I have another buddy who wants to do stand up too, but that's why I was like, I like talking to different comedians to see their style, just like I like talking to different musicians, seeing their. Do you style have like of. a routine worked out? Nope. But I have, like I said, those buggy rants. Mm-hmm. So I have like twelve of those recorded, which I can mesh into it. I have some specific goofy jokes that I would do, which is. I'll say this: your first time being on Kill Tony would be ballsy. That would be epic. be ballsy. That would be so epic. I want to do be, that. I'd be nervous. Uh huh. Uh, with with the experience. Well, you know the thing I mean? is, I wouldn't be nervous to do the thing. I'd be nervous with them talking shit. Nah. And because they're gonna be that's like, more natural to me. Well, yeah, that's the ro- <laughs> that's the roasting side of it. Yeah. And I'm a rapper, so mm-hmm. like, yeah, I can do that. Like, but that. Uh, but um, but if you have, uh, especially with them, it would be easier to have some things in your back pocket. Why don't you do shit. comedy rap? Just like, uh, well, that's that's the little dicky thing, and that's why he got so big actually, because there wasn't many people doing it, and um, still not. I don't know. That feels weird to me. Does it? Yeah, rap to me is it's more like a poetry journal thing. Okay. Like music to me is just a journal of emotions, whatever I'm feeling, whether it's happy, cocky, sad, emotional. I use music as that outlet. So to do like, I say goofy shit. You just described everything I, I believe with comedy. Too. Yeah. See, that, so all right. So that's interesting. Yeah. I'm definitely going to start writing a bit like a like a set out, but I I'd guess love I'm, to it's, hear it, man. it's just connected bits. I'd and love shit. to hear it. 
Facts. I'll give you some notes if you want. Definitely, definitely. I will be honest, mm-hmm. and I'll let you know. I, mm-hmm. I even, if you'd like, I can even give you my spin on what I think would make it funny. I you should straight I mean? up. I'm, I'm I should straight up just help. do one and add fake audience laughs, like, and then I'll send you that. <laughs> and then I'll send that, like that'll be. Or like, you could do what Andrew. This is Schultz, where they're supposed to I think to laugh. Andrew Schultz was doing it. He was doing like YouTube specials, and it was just silence. Yeah, like it was like pandemic stuff, and mm-hmm. he, it was just silence. He was just saying his jokes and. He kind of like just knew people were laughing behind the screen. Yeah, so there was no audio of laughing yeah, and it's shit. It's not a Seinfeld show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? it's, no, I was, I'm saying yeah, to make, no, to I'm make it goofy. Like, uh, like, so you could guys could boom, imagine boom, where boom, it would be. <laughs> That'd be fucking great. Yeah. No, I'm definitely going to get into it ASAP. Like, um, I've been thinking about it a lot. And like I said, I love uh, I love the things that you're posting and shit. Thanks, man. But uh, what's your favorite thing about it? About what? Comedy? Yeah. Like what really made? Because your dad did it. Was that the main thing? Well, it's what. Well, my my whole upbringing has been pretty much, don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, no fear. Um, say what's on your mind. Mm-hmm. Because my my belief has always been, if people know where you're at and know what you're thinking, and you're always upfront about what you're feeling. Anytime yeah. they cross the line, they made that choice. Yeah. So everybody really kind of knows me. You know, through mm-hmm. my humor, through talking. And the thing I love about comedy most is I talk all the time. I'm yeah. a salesman. So, like, I have to be kind of restrained. Mm-hmm. And there's little quips throughout life that I just would love to tell somebody to their face, but mm-hmm. things that would probably get, get yeah. me fired. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But with comedy, like, who can tell me no? Who yeah, can you're tell me allowed to, stop? to. And it all comes from love. It's all perspective and, and all that, mm-hmm. you know. But it's very it's freeing to say what's on your what's on your soul not just mm-hmm. what's on your mind but what's on your soul and it's good intentions it's to laugh hell yeah it's not to like exactly. bitch or bicker about it i'm an yeah. addict man through mm-hmm. and through i am an addict and i'm mm-hmm. addicted to that feeling mm-hmm. of making an entire room of people laugh yeah. just like you're you're mm-hmm. addicted to everybody bopping through your yeah, shit you that's know what, what i mean it is, yeah. that's what it is it's that that adrenaline mm-hmm. rush yeah. Everybody should feel that, whether it's comedy, performing, yeah. sp- athletes feel it. There's nothing like it's not about being the center of attention. It's about some form of connection that happens with the crowd that you can't really explain, and it is an adrenaline rush yeah. of that no drug can give you. I've described it as like like vindicated uncomfortability. Mm-hmm. Like you put yourself into this position, so of vulnerable, like, yeah, so vulnerable, and you're mm-hmm. at the whim of your art. Mm-hmm. And then you get that instant feedback, that instant gratification that you would get from like a Coke bump yeah, or that's something. What I'm that saying. instant it's, gratification, it and it's just that you feel so vindicated in your thought and mm-hmm. your feeling. And some yeah. people hate it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you get crickets. Sometimes yeah. it just none of it sticks. But yeah. you just keep going. I've definitely had some shows because when I do like <laughs> my sets, it'll be one MP3 mm-hmm. of like 12, 15 minutes, but it'll be like five songs. Yeah. So my set's already set. It's not like I can switch in the order or what. And sometimes I'll pull up and the crowd isn't what I thought it would be. So I'm doing like my singy stuff in front of a crowd that wants to hear rap. Mm-hmm. And it's good to be different. And that has worked sometimes, but sometimes not. Nah, people sometimes just want to fucking rage when yeah. it comes to that stuff. So Some people just want to go off. Mm-hmm. So yeah, having having certain sets prepared for things like that. I'd love to have you know enough time recorded down mm-hmm. like on a special or on mm-hmm. a, on a set that I could just get it all out. Yeah. Do you have enough to? You're, I see you posting consistently. Do you have enough to like just like backed up right now, or is it like no, week by week kind I'm of? I'm kind of going going as it comes. Like Word. I got a few I got a few people about to come on to the show. Um, I got a buddy of mine coming on and then i got a, a, a rapper from maryland coming on uh, next week Is and you it, drop you drop them once a week i'm trying to we trying to I'm, yeah we, it's we, hard to be consistent with podcasts dude. yeah we just lost my dad about a month ago too no so shit it's been, sorry about it's, that nah, thanks man um mm-hmm. it's but it's been it's been tough to to get through i'm not even through but yeah. you know what i mean like it's just to consistently get mm-hmm. with it yeah you know it's definitely lit in a fire yeah for sure it's interesting what those things do mm-hmm. when those things happen in life because yeah. for me it could uh, I never lost anybody in my life until 2020, 2019, but it all, like, I lost, like, six friends within those next two years, mm. and I curled up in, in a ball and just, I didn't stop creating. I painted it all, and I documented all of it, so that's the cool thing, but at the same time, it's like, I you have this vision of where you'll be in life mm. and who's going to be there when you make it to the top, yeah. and to see that the people that you saw yourself holding the champagne with aren't here it changes your perspective of why you're doing it and where you want to go and shit like that. So that made me really dive into the art more. So that's why instead of 
trying to land some big rapper deal or do this. I was just like, fuck this. I'm just going to, I don't do this. I'm not doing this for that. Obviously, I want to survive off of it, right. which is, it's been keeping me alive, but it hasn't been enough to go to that next level. So at this point, I just look at my art and music as just like a journal, like I was saying, like from those moments and moments. And that's how I look at these podcasts. When we listen back to these in four or five years, same thing with yours, you're going to be like, oh, I remember how I felt during that time. Yeah. And that's why I didn't do it. And we'll learn from our past way more with these clips and shit like that oh yeah and it's um and also like these freeform conversations there's this is this feels like a little bit more of an interview i don't do this normally i don't normally ask questions but i'm interested like i'm interested in your style what got you into it things that because comedy is uh that's a scary route road road to go down because like i said i i can hide behind the music and the art and the, the the vibe of it more not the art but i can hide behind literally the sounds of how good it sounds sonically over me actually being vulnerable right because if i was just to say those things that's like oh shit like this kid needs some help <laughs> like but no it's see but i would be nervous as all hell to mm, sing yeah and then to rap because what if yeah what if i sound like shit yeah you know i can i can talk all day mm-hmm. you know but then but, it comes to yeah right. so it's interesting those are interesting things. Yeah, two totally different paths, man. Different <clears throat> arts. Yeah, but it's all it's still all expression and um mm-hmm. the thing for music is to just have people dancing and holding hands and then the thing about comedy is to be have people laughing and holding hands. Like it's all the same thing that we're yearning for and you're trying to get an involuntary response. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's what you need. Like when you feel some music and, mm-hmm. and when you hear something that you love you're getting an involuntary response. Like you have no control over the music you love. Yeah. Just like you have no control over what makes you laugh. Yeah, that was what that was what's interesting about Marlton, because when I grew up, B Rad, B Rad Jeezy, mm-hmm. that was because Jeezy. I wore a big shirt. Yeah. But it was I listened to rap, obviously, right. but I was the wigger because of the bigger shirt. And everybody else listened to rap though. Yeah. So uh, in middle school you start to dress according to like the music you listen to, you know? Like you saw, like the goth kids. I had and so like, many phases, man. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I remember. All, I remember. We all... I, it took me a very long time to find out who I who I really wanted to be, mm-hmm. and who I wanted to be, not yeah. who others needed me to be. Yeah, and you that's I mean? that's that's the thing about uh, towns like Marlton. They'll they'll try to tell you who you are from fucking first grade on. It's very. I'm talking about other people mm. from my experience, not the teachers, not like that, but. Uh, but other kids, you know, it's very weird. And then when those kids are like that, you just, un- when you get older, you understand that it was their parents. Mm. It wasn't them. So now, like, my anger towards certain groups or anything like that as a kid, because when I, when I became popular, like, at 19, when I started the Cyphers and I was, like, semi-viral, a lot of the kids that were talking shit on me in high school wanted to, like, be my friends at the party, which <laughs> is, like, a very weird... So I dealt with that, like, fake fame thing at 19 you know and i was able to navigate it but um but it's also a drug and that that's a drug in itself because i felt like i had made it so instead of continuing working like i was dropping ciphers consistently you dropped your bags and relaxed i just yeah i raged the, the mm. girl i loved since seventh grade became my girlfriend like all these all these things happened that were not supposed to happen for me mm. and then i before i knew what a year and a half went by and i got a dui mm. so that completely shifted a lot of perspective on what i was doing and that's explains my work ethic now so like we were just saying it's hard to have a podcast every week i this will probably be this will be like the fifth sixth one that i have waiting to drop Mm. and then i have like my live performances and all that too so i'm set for like the next two three months to go and that's why i like doing podcasts like this because they're timeless yeah it does it's not like we're talking about the super bowl right now it doesn't need to be dropped tomorrow sure it's more of a timeless conversation that can be stamped you know Mm. you can look back in those moments and shit but um but when is your next show i'm i'll be right back yeah, no worry. Uh, I don't like. I said I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any planned at the moment, but I, I'm, I plan on catching some open mic soon. If you're uh, if you're interested in working on some stuff, there's nothing better than uh, kind of getting your feet wet with some open mics. I'm definitely down, dude. It's probably the best place to pop your cherry, as opposed to uh, a, a, a multi-million viewer forum like <laughs> like Kill Tony. Like, don't get me wrong, that would yeah. be absolutely badass, and yeah. I would support you one thousand mm-hmm. percent. I would be like, that's the that's the most 
big dick, <laughs> big dick thing I've ever seen in my life. My dad walked around with a big dick for seventy years. Shit, <laughs> that's so great. The f- simple fact that's that you would that would be your first stand up would be like mm-hmm. anybody who'd be willing to do that on their first like cherry mm-hmm. popper is just an iron iron cock. And I'm totally you know down. I mean? Like I, that's exactly what I want, dude. Do it. I think the joke that I do would be enough bullshit for them to uh. Oh shit! Ooh, sorry guys. We have the UFC fights on. Some big fights tonight. I do need this to not go the distance right now, and to keep my parlay. (laughs) Wow, that sounds that sounds like good shit. Good shit. No distance. He's still wobbly. <laughs> fucking, that won't happen again. I'm sorry. See, you're talking about the phones. We're talking about keeping the phones away, and the fucking television has someone getting knocked the fuck out. He's yeah, still asleep. I, I try not to swipe. I try uh-huh. not to. I try to watch YouTube or long, long, oh, anything dude, over 15, 20 minutes. I get swiping so bad, when, when my dad, When my dad was in the hospital, man, uh-huh. I, and I had to, like, just kind of escape a little bit, mm-hmm. so I dove into the phone, like, the swiping gives me anxiety. So, yeah. like... Shout out to any of you, you, you know, Twitch stream gamers out there. Yeah. Like, you guys are the real ones. Yeah. Aqua FPS and, like, You're Landmark and all shit. that. Dude, like, just not only that, but, like, I can pay attention. It's stuff I relate to because I love video games and mm-hmm. all that. And, and they're all they're all fucking Gs, man. Yeah. Because, you know, there's I, too I much of this. I should have I started, like, sh- I promised myself when I bought the PC, if I fucking download a video game, I'm going to stream it. Didn't stream it. Just played video games again. Like, for the first time in years. Mm-hmm. So like you can get a lot of good content from that too. Yeah, like a lot of well, good Well, my clips. setups made made for gaming. Yeah. Yeah. Do that, you do that? Do you stream? I don't stream gaming. I've recorded a few things, but like the games I play are like hours on hours, mm. like survival games. What um, do you love? Which ones? Uh, I, I, on the PC, I played a lot of Escape from Tarkov. Oh, where um, I've heard of that. Daisy. A lot. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was console gaming big Daisy time for years on end, one, I played like Ark Survival Evolved and all that stuff. Ark and is dope. I, can't, Ark I never is, played it, but it's so Ark dope. Ark is an absolute cult. If you still yeah. play that game right now, please seek help. <laughs> because for Dude, the love of God, if you're farming shit. Pteranodon <laughs> eggs and you are and you are you have somebody from the UK farming cementing taste, Dude. you need a th- need a therapist in that, the worst that way. That game is so fucking cool. I was I was in it hard. Like I said, mm-hmm. I'm an addict, man. Yeah. And that that was something to be addicted to for sure. Yeah, dude, that's how I am. Any, I made some real I friendships like in that game. Anytime though. I'm, I like something, man, I need it. I made over, some real over, beautiful over. friendships in that game. I, there's two dudes in Arkansas I have not physically met to this mm-hmm. day, but I've been really good friends with them for over a decade. That's awesome. I'm invited to one of their weddings. I'll that's meet them for the to first me time. On Fortnite right now. Really? Like, I, I, yeah, I'm getting random. Like, I, dude, Fortnite is so fun. It's nah, because it's zero build. I'd, ra- I'm, I'd I'm rather play PUBG. Shit. I'm not building shit. I never played play PUBG. PUBG. What's you never played PUBG? No. What is it? Is it like Call of Duty? Like real shit? So it's like Fortnite only. I mean, I, I don't want to call it a little bit more tactically sound because you still got people well, running I mean, around it, and clown, but it's, it's more like clown masks, real and shit. guns and shit. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. real guns. It's not you're not chugging like a like a power yeah, up. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. not Peter Griffin with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, Peter Griffin's <laughs> ripped right now. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> jacked. He's fucking bold. <laughs> the, the guy I, who dresses I him, like and uses X him. is a, a dumbbell, hundred pound dumbbell. Okay. <laughs> it's fucking great. I think I played Fortnite one time when it like first released, and then like I I was just waiting for PUBG to come out on console. That's all. I was waiting. I might have to try it. I'll, I'll download it. It's probably dope now. I haven't played it in a while. But uh, but Fortnite, I like it because um, it's a uh, they update it like every two weeks or some shit. So there's like new the map is like changed every couple mm. weeks. They have new weapons. That's pretty cool. So nothing changed. Like nothing's the same. So like if you played it three months ago and you liked it and you jumped on now, you'd be like, what the fuck? Everything I liked is gone. So I that's mean, what's interesting about it. But but yeah, that game gaming communities are like either dope as fuck or just so toxic and we're the generation who bred that we are oh, the we're fucking, the we're the original trolls we're the dude. call of duty <laughs> the lobbies OG dude trolls. the first the first live generation man yeah like, and so like all the kids talking stupid shit for like 10 years old 11 years old now like we did that they're yeah. our kids like yeah. just saying random shit online and here's a whole other side of this convo fucking apparently like 60 percent of the internet is bots Really? Like 60% of the comments and Well, if the responses. 60% of those bots are listening, like and subscribe for Christ's Ooh. sake, man. I'm, you know. That's bad. <laughs> we need views, dog. Like, just bot into, my, bot into my algorithm Bro, for Christ's sake. Bro, and that's one of the things I heard about a lot of these streamers, that they have a lot of bots in there. Like, I'm not going to name drop, but, like, these new... It's the new reality show, yeah. bro. Like, remember how we had Jersey Shore, which was so fucking stupid? <laughs> fucking, um... My wife's obsessed with Jersey Shore. Uh, I bet she is. She's a Jersey girl, it's right? It's so entertaining to watch. Is though. she from Jersey? Yeah. 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 She's from Beverly. Uh, so when it's like I a saw whole different vibe yeah. from Marlton. Yeah. When yeah. I saw um, 
when I saw like a clip of what Mike looked like now, they all just got a little more puffy. They all just like puffed up. Did they? Yeah. yeah Have older. you seen them? Have you seen what they look no. like recently? Yeah. No. I mean, it's 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 <laughs> when you, so you don't scroll. I scroll. No. And every fucking six scrolls is an ad. Okay. It's so fucked up. Fair dude. enough. It's like you can't even do it. But mm. I do, I do, and I do enjoy that, dude. That's addictive. Just. I go on to my socials to kind of just see how my stuff's doing a few times a day. Mm-hmm. And then other than that, like if I'm on my phone, I try and I try and have something like Netflix or something I could turn my phone yeah. and watch something for a long time. Because this, like, it's like, I, I think I said it in one of my rants on my show. It's like a car accident, titties, yeah, you know, yeah, racist yeah, stuff. Dude, yeah. Then you got the next stupid ass challenge. I, th- I saw a dude, I saw a dude put a giant firework like an industrial grade fourth mm-hmm. of july style firework in it like a kmart parking lot and just lit that shit at all it lit that shit off he called it the alarm challenge and for like <laughs> the like four miles in each direction all years wow. like the shit blew can you imagine people like trending that and be like oh it's the next challenge like yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what your people are doing well Stop. the, al- the <laughs> algorithm's very weird because it does go based off of like what you want to see but i'll hit not interested on like specifics so like see, i didn't even know you it, could do that like if there's a girl in a bikini i'll hold that and put not interested because i don't need to be turned on 24 7 no straight up i like puppies dude i want to see kittens and shit i don't want to see car accidents i don't want to see like you remember the show ridiculous or yeah. uh, not scarred it was okay. where it was skateboarders yeah. just breaking their legs and yeah. shit. No, I can't watch shit like that. I need my algorithm to be like about science or like shit like that. But so what I'm saying when I hit not interested for the streamers, for example, mm-hmm. the ones who are walking around like Jersey Shore type shit, I'll hit not interested and ten scrolls later it'll be there again because random accounts are taking clips from these streams and posting them back up with. Which this is something I want to bring up because I thought about this yesterday. You know those, well, you don't scroll, but I'm sure you've seen some of them where it's like, it's a clip of something and then under it is like a clip of someone cooking yeah. or a click of like a video game. Yeah. Those people who have those accounts, they make like five, 10, 20 grand a month because they have like five different accounts doing that same thing. It's really that much? But yeah, well, it's a do- on TikTok, it's a dollar a fucking thousand views. When you have 10,000 subscribers, every thousand views is a dollar. So if every video they drop is getting 50,000 views, you know, they're getting a lot of money. Mm. And um, But this is my point. A musician, I drop a song, it's copyrighted. Mm-hmm. If you post a certain amount of that song length on your page, I get the money that goes to that. Right. But if I change the pitch of it, yeah. you get nothing. Uh, yeah. So same thing with the content. Mm. All these podcasts, all these. I guess it's helping build the podcast because it makes people go. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, there should be some trickle down... Bidenomics in that. I think, that's what, I think that's what my cousin and all his friends at the SAG after strike were uh, uh-huh. were uh, were fighting for. You know, a lot of the streaming, a lot of the a lot, a lot of the writers, a lot of the, the the whole all of them. They were getting boned on yeah. on royalties and rights. Like there's mm-hmm. like two people making a couple million, and yeah. everybody else is like below minimum wage in some cases. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's fucked up, and that's that's honestly the whole entertainment industry. And you see it with actors right now. They they were going on strike all summer because like actors are broke type shit because they're. It's it's weird, bro. But when it comes, like I the would whole rather Hollywood scene is yeah, wild right yeah, now. Yeah, I never wanted to. Even with the music scene and the entertainment industry, like I've seen some shit. Mm. I've gotten in those doors that you want to be in and seen behind that curtain. And those rumors are real, dude. Like mm. the sh- the the some gr- old dude trying gr- to bang you in a room. Not me, but deal? someone else. <laughs> and I saw it. And um, yeah. To keep a long story short, when you see shit like that, to make a long story long that was a bad joke but (laughs) but when it comes to shit like that dude now you're talking about morals and why you do it again and and what will you do to get the success that you want and when it comes to that shit like being signed and as a rapper being bitter like why am i not signed why why is this guy signed i'm such a better rapper than him and and then you learn i'm not saying everybody's sucking dick Mm. But majority are straight up. The <laughs> majority of them. My buddy, actually my are. buddy Mark used to call that the Illuma Dickin. Yeah. Yeah. So if you get to a certain level of fame or or wealth, they're all eventually they're yeah. just going to show up yeah. to your house. There's going to be like four of them. They're going to be in robes. They're going to have a bunch of candles and shit. And, and an old dude who can barely get his wiener up is going to be like, "You yeah. shut me <laughs> off, and I'll give you billions." You know what I mean? 
<laughs> it's so fucked up because it, it really is fucking true, dude. It actually is. And I guess when it Hope comes not. when it comes to a level of like I guess power that these people obtain with the money, they get so bored. And the only thing that they like that will get them off, like the old guy who can't get the only thing that mm-hmm. will get that old guy hard is a young bull who's like <laughs> is a young bull who's like coming through. A young hungry rapper <laughs> from fucking <laughs> from Philly, Marlton. dude. From, from <laughs> Philly, dude. Straight up from Philly. That's fucking crazy. Oh, man. But like, yeah, like there's that. So when you when you realize why you do it, and when friends die, and blackmail, and friends fuck you over in the business, you like, why am I even doing this? And at the end of the day, I'm doing it because I fucking want to tell a story, my story, and that's why I write. So instead of being pissed at like. Everything would be justified, by the way, to be a rapper about it. Just talk mm-hmm. a bunch of shit, dox mm-hmm. people, like, like not give addresses, but just talk shit. And that would be all justified, but that's not who I am. I'm not, like, that kind of asshole. I just mm-hmm. want everybody to hold hands and dance, and that's why I do it. So I had to take a step back. The second I took a step back, the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. So, like, literally a week later. So it fell right into my hands, and that's when I met Coco Evolved to help me with all of this stuff. Nice. So... When I that was when I like I said I had that revelation of why I do it. I'm never gonna not rap. Like I'm gonna rap till I'm a hundred. I'm gonna be that old guy rapping. But because it's as far as success and things I really wanted to do in terms of that and respect, I did already. Mm. So I had to like really like I said change it. And now it's just, I just look at it like a diary. So now to express that is to perform. To perform is to throw the shows and host. And now through hosting, I found that I really like talking shit in between, which is. The crowd work of comedy. How do you do? And uh, like with, in those little shit talks, like do you get? Do you yeah, get dude, very, very good. Yeah, okay. like well, you know the crowd. Like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Do you do it like between? Well, I don't know anybody in the crowd. So, so well, you know, no, no, no. I don't mean, I don't mean like you know people in the crowd. I mean you, like you've been yeah, bumping yeah, for a little bit. Like yeah, they're yeah, they yeah. they're feeling your shit. Yeah. So like they're already mm-hmm. on your side. Like yeah. you got a good feel for them. So it's different because when I throw a show. It's always 50-50. 50 of 50, 50 the people I've never met, 50% of the people I, I do know. Sure. But So for my shows where I'm hosting it, it's different. I talk a little more shit like, to hype people up, whereas the open mic, I actually don't know. Like when we do open mics, we do them once a month in Philly at, at the Spit Philly and Studio. You should pop out if you can. Okay. They're always a good vibe. But okay. um, you, could go, you could come up and do a, a stand-up for it straight up. Because mm-hmm. like, um, it's open mic, so we have a list and people can sign up. Like Some people do poetry. Some people sing, mm-hmm. rap. But um, but I always set it off, and then I host in between. So um, so as far as like the crowd work with that, it's different because mm-hmm. I don't know these people. So like if I like their song, I'll just like I'll like high pitch mimic it when it's over. You know, <laughs> some little shit like that that just gets people just feeling goofy. Like oh, like everybody fucks with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if someone talks shit or some weird shit gets there, you know, like because it's rappers, it happens. It's like how'd you do on your first it's different. Uh, your first open mic rapping? My well, my first time I ever rapped apparent was a like, so that's funny you said the t- kill Tony thing because this is what I thought about when you said that. My first rap show was it, it was a sold out show at Voltage Lounge, only like three hundred fifty people, but I oh. opened up for the Palmer Squares. Oh, cool. And it um and yeah, that was my first show. So like the thing is like that that nerves that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. It wasn't nerves. I was excited. It was like oh I'm I've rapped in the mirror too long. Mm-hmm. I've rapped in hundred ciphers and. The hosting stems from I used to throw house parties, mm-hmm. which turned into hosting the ciphers, just setting it up. So talking in front of gra- groups of people was never an issue to me. And then the rebellion of being a rapper, being the wigger. Like when ki- people called me a wigger, my shirts got bigger. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> but from freshman year to I sophomore. I do know you were drowning in a couple of white tees. My, my late, shirts got late, bigger late middle and school, bigger because, for sure. because they started... I was like, I am what you say I am. That was em. that was the fuck biggest em, song dude. in the world too. Like, <laughs> dude, I, 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 dude, you know, I, I know straight up. Fuck I, had, I never. I had the FUBU, the South Pole, and all mm-hmm. that stuff. You know, you like what you like, dude. Yeah, and yeah. You've always comfortability. You, you've always, to me, you've always been a person who's been true to themselves. Like you're, it's what yeah. you want, what you like. Mm-hmm. You've never really strayed too far from that. Yeah, you know, at at, at its core, I guess. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting because um. I listened to rap, but I didn't dress like rap. I just wore big shirts because I was chunky growing up. It's so weird growing Were up. Were you? Yeah, I was a chunky little bull, dude. I wore big shirts. You didn't see it. <laughs> you didn't see it. I was chunky, oh, dude. Man. I would wear a shirt in the pool. 
So that's why I wore big I was shirts. A, I was a shirt pool kid, you know what I mean? But you wore tight shirts. I remember you got stocky one yeah. year. I remember the year you yeah, got stocky. Yeah. And your shit, you were like, yeah, you were around like that. Yeah. I, I thought we Started were in woodworking class in Cherokee the one time. With John Simmons. Was John Simmons in there? Yep. Me and John Simmons would be in that room huffing that paint, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was so fun. Rest Yo, in peace, John, rest dog. Rest in peace, Johnny. The fucking I miss <laughs> we, him we, so much, dude. I do too, dude. I miss Cause, him so much. Cause that was, was one a, of my that best was, friends. Dude, that was such a weird thing for me at that time because it, to, to to navigate Cherokee, half the kids hated me from that clicky fuck him, he's a wigger. And then John Simmons, the kid that yeah. was beating all of them up. Yeah. And it was like huffing yeah, paint with me and being my friend and the like it was very weird popularity because john and mine's group was like you had ann thomas you had you yeah. could bleep all the names out if you want but no, you no, had, no, you name had them billy all. you had kevin you know what i mean mm-hmm. we're we were also john geidel we had all oh, we're also goddamn different mm-hmm. you know what i mean you had you know dan chung you know we had, yeah i was confused yeah, about that because we're they were also called, goddamn i different. was the wigger but john geidel was walking around with big shirts too but John Gatto could fight. Yeah, well, John Gatto's more likely to slap somebody. Yeah, like, people yeah, knew, you know people, I mean? he was tall and people yeah, knew John Gatto yeah, could fight. He, dude hit puberty in fucking seventh yeah. grade. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, he could be, he could dress like that. That's yeah, funny. And unless, you, <laughs> unless you've been in a couple fights, people, I guess, didn't respect. And I, no one had ever fought me. Well, I'd when never, you hung out I'd with John, when you hung out with Simmons, it was going to yeah, happen eventually. Someone, yeah, yeah, eventually. Because, yeah, you know, and I'll tell you this, man. I've been in several fights in front of John. That dude, if somebody were to ever jump in, he always handled it without question yeah. him and billy would always fucking be like nope nope i heard the nope. stories, I heard the oh stories God, and then I, I saw one of them too i saw one of them so it, i forget what Which it was it was a carnival it, it might have been one of the I ones hope it wasn't the, the carnival because that's one i lost no I, it wasn't time. it wasn't you <laughs> it was john and um all i remember is it wasn't near the carnival it might have been near savage field or some shit but all i know is there was one tiny spot at, like a t- huge field of grass mm-hmm. and there was like the smallest square pocket of fucking concrete mm-hmm. and that just happened to be the one spot that john slammed the bull on mm-hmm. but john was getting you know how he sagged his pants mm-hmm. like so john was like only falling because of that shit mm-hmm. but was able to roll out scramble Johnny out of was it thick and get for it. a hot minute yeah 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 until his early 20s he was a thick boy mm-hmm he was a little thick guy dude. yeah i played football with him from peewee league all the way up to high school man like Dude, that kid was so funny too. He was the best, man. He, he lo- really and he loved funny. everybody as long as you were the same thing, man. As long as you were cool and you were yeah. all right at the party and mm-hmm. you know you weren't a douchebag to the people he loved, and it was good. It was all good. Yeah, I still, how it should be. I still talk to his uh, talk to his dad and his mom and his and his brother every now and again. Wow. I gotta go uh, get my bike serviced and uh, see. Yeah, his, I talked to John. I talked to him. Go out again. Me and his brother collabed. In the pan in the pandemic, I just had I just asked him to send me a little piano thing and I. Basically, hip hopped it up, chopped it, and had my boy play guitar over it, mm-hmm. and then put them together, and I just rapped over it. Sweet, some pandemic shit. That was before all this came around. I was doing that like typical iPad video, mm-hmm. like you're doing, like with that. So when when you get a, I would I would suggest get yeah, just get a little DL, DLSR, John. Yeah, I'm, I'm your checking. Your audio sounds great. I'm checking. Yo, the the mics are great. Um, mm-hmm. we're we're pumping through a uh, an H8, a Zoom H8. My boy, my boy lent me. It's like a portable. Um, recorder mm-hmm. interface thing. It's yeah, actually those are good solid. too. Those are good too. Um, I just got to work on my camera, like my camera, my lighting. Yeah. I'm in a, I'm in half of my garage right now. My whole studio is just a converted garage. Oh, word. All right. Yeah. Is it cold in there right now? No, I got I got fairly temperature controlled. It's word, got baseboard word. heaters and all that stuff. And then in the summer, it does get a little toasty, but I have an air conditioning clutch. Yeah, the, the goal is to eventually get a, a brick and mortar location for venues and mm-hmm. studio space and word. You know, I just LLC'd and everything, dust off the mic media, it's officially live. Yeah, I, li- I like that name, too. Plays off the name, Dustin. So a couple of things, actually. Something happens right here, someone oh. gets knocked out. Ooh. It, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Nice Sleep. combo, nice combo. <laughs> nice combo. Oh, man, I remember getting, who, who was it? You remember Tony Fox? Yeah. And his brother, John? I don't know his brother, but I know Tony. Dude, I used Wait, to get I used I to get Tony? fucking ripped in their living room, man. And then we would <laughs> Tony do, Fox we would a funny do kid exactly kid. this. We would just mute everything. They would play like um, what was it? Spirit of, Spirit of the Cimarron. <laughs> we watched that noises? shit ripped, and then no, I would do the voices for the whole thing, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then like the punches and shit. I think Dude, we that's doing. so funny. I described you like that today when I was. I don't know if you know Andrew Decker. Yeah, but um, but I was like, yeah, you know Dustin. He's like, yeah, I know. 
Oh yeah, he did say I forget. He, I just talked to him a little bit ago. I don't know. I forget what he said. I know Decker. But he was like, he's like, I don't know him like you do from like high school. I was like, yeah, he'd be the kid in class like talking like this <laughs> out of nowhere and shit. And you just did it. <laughs> yeah. That's so yeah. great. That's uh, a memory. Comedy is definitely the kind of attention I crave. For yeah, sure. that's what I mean. You were always a goofball. Yeah. And like, I don't know if you were in. Were you? Did you have Miss Marone's math? Mm-mm. We had a couple classes, but like me being where I was, I was very quiet. But when it came to class, I was the, like the class clown too. Like yeah. I would, there would be moments like whenever it's goofy, I was the one just saying some goofy shit. But no one would expect it because I was judged from that it's such a dude i'm telling you man i had such a weird experience if i wore abercrombie and fitch i would have had a great childhood in marlton hmm. but now i had harley t-shirts and wallet chains and mm-hmm. all that shit <laughs> yeah i do remember your shit used to j- jingle when you would walk yeah, i don't give a shit man i was wearing steel toe boots because but after i got through all my like, i would drag my shoes i did like a i did like a white chocolate phase where i was rolling around with like south pole and fubu and shit i had the mm-hmm. white iversons and i had then, all the south Pole. i did a little hippie phase because my, uh-huh. you know, my boy Kevin had the long, you know, it, the, it, I just started, of course, I was smoking a ton of weed in middle yeah. school. A ton of weed. Just too yeah. much for a middle schooler. <laughs> but it was probably like not that. It was probably middies. Yeah. It, oh, it was all garbage. Uh-huh. Dude, they've been working on weed like it's the cure for everything. Like every, the, whatever whatever is out there in circulation right now has to be curing something. Yeah. Because it's they've made this shit retardedly powerful. Dude, it's actually, I like switched to dabs for like, I was on dabs for like two years. And like, I couldn't figure out why I was depressed. <laughs> I stopped, and then I took because a, you, your brain is no longer I, able to produce and happy I took, chemicals. And then I took a break for a week and just started smoking grass. And then I took a hit of the dab. Like a week later, I was like, "Oh my god, I was living like this." Yeah, like I was waking your, up and dabbing. Your baseline is like like retarded. Tommy, Tommy Chong's mornings. Baseline your baseline retard. is like that. never go full retard, bro. <laughs> yeah. You never go full retard. That yeah, was, that's why you're not feeling anything. Yeah, you have no I, ability to. Oh my god, dude! I can't. I, like I took the break and. I realize like how I was living my life. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, I like, hear you. I'm trying to slow down on smoking. It's a it's an interesting thing because when you when you slow down, you have so many dreams. Like, have you like you smoke, right? Yeah. So like, have you ever like stopped for a while? Oh yeah. And the I, dreams. Yeah, fucking... I, I only started smoking up until recently. I was Not I was really. off everything for like ten years. Oh wow, really, yeah, I, dude? I had a whole rip and roar. Like what, when mm. you were talking about that, when you got your DUI, I was probably in jail a couple of times. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh wait, I did hear. Yeah, I don't know if dude, you're down, I've been on the news like twice. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a fuck. What, dude, um, I'm gonna talk about everything. So that's what me and Decker said. He's yeah. like, what? he's like, wasn't he taking copper out of air conditioning bro, or something? I've been through so much fucking crazy shit, bro. <laughs> I remember that's the so last that story thing I is remember. bullshit. I told that <laughs> <laughs> that story is some bullshit. All right, so go ahead, go get your I, fucking no, drink. Say it, say it, say it's say all good. So I'm in like the heat of it. You know what I mean? I'm I'm like full blooded chemical dependent. It's like a year out of high school. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm like a year out of high school, full on chemically dependent of painkillers, opiates, you fucking name oh, it, dude. Shit. I'm ripping and roaring, and I was hanging out with this dude. Let's yeah, call. That's Marlton. Yeah, dude, because it was. Listen, that's Marlton is 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 nestled right in the Pine Barrens, where 25 minutes one direction, you're hearing woo, yeah, just sirens and shit, and then the other direction, you're hearing woo. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just rednecks and crazy yep. shit. So yep. the the only thing consistently you can do is drugs. It is rednecky in Marlton. It gets there. Like, it does get and there. And then like Shimung, Tabernacle, yeah. Chatsworth, and yep, then it yep, just yep, then yep. you start hearing banjos louder. Yep, so yep, I'm yep. I'm in the heat of it. <laughs> and I'm hanging out with this dude. His name uh, this dude Chris. I called him CeeLo. Just mm. this big cock diesel motherfucker. He could always get shit and all that stuff. And he's like, yo. And it, we're gonna. My my dad works for the Care One next to Scooters. And, Care One, yo, dude. and there's a and and he said they're they're tearing the building down so we can take the AC units. That's how he Marco said, Marco used to work at Care One. Yeah, that's probably how I heard of it because Marco was probably working at Maybe, Care One dude. still. And, and so we get there. I got the little Chevy S10 pickup. Remember that with the Bob Marley sticker right mm-hmm. on the tailgate. Mm-hmm. And we pull up, and I should have known something was wrong when he pulls out a fucking baseball bat to take the free oh, online's no, out. Dude. He's hitting it. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Oh, he's he's just like, hitting? he's he's taking a, an aluminum baseball bat. He, first of all, he took out this like actual comical. Well, not size. to cut you off. Like, what are you literally thinking in that moment? Where you just in so that moment, I'm thinking well, he's going to help like... me take these off. We're going to go scrap them at Red Line, uh-huh. and then we're going to shoot right down what, to the set, you grab what we need to grab. Oh yeah, yeah, we're fucked up right oh, here. Oh yeah. yeah, dude, there was no clear. Pulling you, this off. Remember how you were talking about? 
remember how we were talking about you couldn't feel? Yeah. Amplify that by like 10 because it's <laughs> fucking painkillers and cocaine. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And he was on the same wavelength. You know, that was a bonding moment for us. We were just like, we just want drugs. Let's fucking do yeah. it. And so, but he told me we could be there. That's the main thing to this story. He told me we could be there. He told oh, me he it was cool. You. He finessed me, right? Because I had yeah. a truck. He, you just, he just needed that. Yeah. yeah. So we, uh, we get there. I empty my, my bed out. We, he starts. Boom, boom, boom. It takes like a, it was like a comical pair. Wow. You, like you, I want to say lawn scissors, but it was like an actual real pair, pair of scissors, like this fucking big. And like he starts. Like a big, like a, like, like a school like scissors. Like, dude, like... if I pulled him out, you'd be like, that is a joke. <laughs> like, that like is a fucking a joke. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like he's like, he was like, he was opening a business. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. He's like, the ribbon. Okay. <laughs> so he starts taking it to the free online and I'm going, Hey, isn't that going to explode? He goes, no, the lines are off. And then like, uh, not, 30 seconds later oh my god just dude. like a train whistle and that's like freezing cold shit right? i don't know how, what the temperature was because i jumped into my truck yeah. like like this and he's tucked behind the other ac unit oh my god so the, all the freon in the entire yeah, that's building is cold shit yeah the that's... entire freon in the entire building is now shooting into the atmosphere and that's like care one shit that's like this it's, is that's... it's scooters it's the scooters roller rink on on east oh, it was at scooters it was yes. just in that parking lot okay yeah, but it was... scooters wasn't even being ran at that no time. dude it was abandoned i think they were using it for storage but yeah, they anyway, were. That so, was using it. As so a cop rolls up, and naturally, I think he's going to chew our ear off about our our, our uh, unorthodox always, way of my, removing my, this my thing. My cousin lived in that neighborhood right next to it. Okay. So I was always, we would always walk. Uh, he the trail. probably heard it. We would always walk the trail to scooters and smoke. And Bro, you could have heard that. You could have heard scooters. that at the Medport. Did you diner. go to scooters as a kid? All the time, dude. I loved. I loved what scooters. happened to roller rinks, dude? Um, drugs uh, <laughs> and the internet. <laughs> There's sides. I, I, I had like some of my first kisses there. Like scooters was the. I shit. had a lot of firsts there. Scooters was so awesome. <laughs> yeah. oh, so anyway, the first dance <laughs> battle. The cop rolls up, and I'm standing there by my truck. I I think he's just gonna give us a tongue lashing by the the. Uh, the unorthodox way we're removing this air, air conditioning unit, and then I see CeeLo's face just drop, and I'm. They I don't think you're. Oh, because he goes. And he goes. What allowed. are you guys doing? And then I'm like, we're allowed to be here. And then he goes, no, <laughs> no, we're not. Oh my god. So I'm like, really, dude? And then I get arrested for uh, defacing the property, and that <sighs> was just one time I made the newspaper and probably the, the local that, news. Oh yeah, and that was the thing about Marlton too. Remember when they made the Facebook page? Yeah. Marlton loves to blow things up. They out made the Facebook page when we were like 20, 19. I don't and, know. But all and dude, I know, you could go on just Marlton's Facebook and see all the kids that we were growing up. Yeah, like, if you go back far enough, there's a few it. stories about me. Mm -hmm. And there's a few probably. So how, like, how much did that run you? Like, How much did they charge you for all that fine-wise? You know what? I don't remember. the. It was it was north of $12,000 in damage. Wow. Um, the, the dude I was with wound I up taking onus like to most of it. Because he did eventually admit that he's like, yeah, dude, I told him we were allowed to be there. Oh, so, so you might have I, no, I still had to eat a huge legal dick. Like, yeah. I think I had pro uh, probation for like a year or something like that. But he did take the brunt of it because he fucking told me we were supposed to be there. But oh, my God. I wasn't thinking with my brain. I was thinking with my, my junkie yeah, lizard to get brain. Some drugs, yeah. Yeah, dude. And wow. that's just like one of, that's just one thing they caught me for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's sucking wild. Uh, I, I, um, my DUI ran me about 20, 25. Uh, and it was. If I didn't get pulled over, I would have crashed. Like, I woke up to sirens. I was asleep mm. at the wheel, going 80 on one of the back roads to the shore. I was, it was 80, like, 3 in the morning, snowing in February in 2013. And mm. about 10 years ago, yeah. And, and I was, I had my window cracked because it was freezing out. Right. All the things you do to try to stay awake. And I had jazz music blasting, just like... <laughs> <laughs> like that shit like some weird lsd yeah, nightmare dude, fucking <laughs> and i like i guess he was behind me for like <clears throat> 20 seconds with his lights on and then he like went woo woo woo, woo like real and i heard it second i woke up instantly sober bro mm. it was so weird because i was blacked out i only drink hard liquor i only drink like whiskey vodka i don't drink it was always a rum and coke i don't guy. drink beer i don't drink uh, margaritas or pina coladas but I was celebrating this day because I had got my ciphers back on track. Because mm. remember how I said I, I rode the wave of popularity? Mm -hmm. After I was in two relationships for like a year and a half, I realized, holy fuck, like I just partied and didn't do anything. And I brought it right back. And it was successful. Like the first YouTube video got like 25,000 views in the first five days again. Sweet. So a year and a half, this, so this was like a year and a half after I originally went viral. Mm -hmm. 
25,000 views is amazing in 2013. Like, that's real. Dude, the next year is when Google bought YouTube. Mm. And everything changed. My subscribers stopped getting notifications when I dropped because they wanted you to, like, click the bell. Yeah. So a lot of, little, like, little incentives that people yeah. with emails from 20 fucking 2008. Yeah, I don't want to worry about it. Don't I don't either. I don't want to worry about it. I, don't I just want to make stuff. I, I just want to talk. So that's why I just dropped. Yeah. I don't worry... I have a reel that'll get 20,000 views, and then I'll have a reel that'll get 10 views. I'm like it makes the, no fucking sense. I'm, I'm in what they call the 200-view jail in TikTok. That's apparently. where I'm at. That's I don't know I'm what at. that means. I, just, mm-hmm. I, I don't really give it's a like shit. They ban um, your, it's like they ban your account. If I don't know if it's a curse word. I don't know if it's a subject. Oh, I'm going to stay in that 200-view jail. Yeah, so, okay. so that's like, fuck it. It's very weird, dude. <laughs> it's it's such a weird thing to um to navigate when it comes to that. But... um. But but my point is I was celebrating that night and I'm, do you know Tim Kempf? Yeah, yeah. Let's dox Tim Kempf. This is this is not, I'm kidding. Is, am I using the wrong word? That's dox? like tell it address. Oh, you're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I think that means I'm not giving people's address away. But he was my friend and and um we had a weird situation happen that night where I, he lived across the street from the bar that he bartended at the Marlton Tavern. Okay. And um and. He was giving me all the fucked up drinks. Like, pe- this person doesn't want a pina colada. Here's another margarita. Mm. On top of the drinks that I'm drinking. Like, I only drink straight liquor. So, I was sloppy wasted. And by the time they closed the bar, I realized that he had left without me. And I was supposed to go to his crib. He wasn't there. Him and his girlfriend got in a fight. So, we went to his girlfriend's in Medford instead. So, I'm at the Marlton Tavern in the middle of February at 2 in the morning with nowhere to go. Now it's now it's my fault. I made a dumb decision to drive home, but I don't even remember it because right. I was so blacked out drunk. And we're in Marlton. So where this is this is the point so of the story. Marlton Tavern is Main Street, right? Yeah, right, right in Marlton. But okay. I had to drive back here. Okay. Oh so, shit! That's because I didn't idea. stay at his house. That's a terrible idea. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so continue. So <laughs> that's that's a, the the problem with this thing is and like and him and our friendship and what happened after that is, dude. If I died, he'd be in jail right now. He's the bartender that served me. Mm. He didn't cut me off. He didn't, like, they would have looked at the footage. They would have seen that shit. And that was kind of the point I wanted to make. Like, mm-hmm. dude, I, I'm I'm good with drinking. But, like, I take accountability for driving, of course, like I said. Sure. But if I'm being honest, I don't remember driving. I don't. And mm. and I woke up to the sirens. And the, the road that I woke up on, if I had gone a mile more, it curves like this, and I would have ironically crashed into a liquor store. Wow. And I would have absolutely died. Mm. So I remember how I said I sobered up the second the cop was behind me. The second he was like, what have you been drinking tonight? Because he obviously smelled the liquor. Sure. And I was like, just a couple drinks. Yeah. <laughs> like, we did the sobriety test, and um, obviously I got arrested. And when he arrested me, I was like, honestly, man, like I just want to thank you. Cause like I was not awake at the wheel right there. You just saved my life. Mm. So instead of being an erratic, angry drunk, I was thankful because I was gonna die. And and in the police report, they have like a three boxes you can check like like erratic, angry, emotional, sad. Mm-hmm. And he wrote in like other like very polite, like cooperative. Yeah, cooperative, nice. polite, and which was interesting, but. But Wonder when it comes to, I will give like. you guys a little lesson here. No matter what, when it comes to DUI, depending on how much you blow, I blow double, triple the limit. I blew like a .028 or Solid. some shit. And, um, but you don't need a lawyer, dude. You can represent yourself because what they give you is what they're going to give you. Like, you're just going to pay more money to the lawyer that you don't need to pay. Unless you're a moron like me, in which case, please, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I I'm, represented myself a few times in court. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you're, you can talk, bro. Yeah, I'm going to make the whole court feel bad about no, themselves it's just, it's, just a, it's, just a, it's just a different thing until the lingo. judge he looks fat in his robe but it's very <laughs> weird certain words in public mean different things in the courtroom hmm. so like um for example i got in an accident a year ago and it wasn't my fault but on the ticket it said it was my fault hmm. and now i'm in a position because it's like this do I pay a lawyer to try and do this to do more? It would cost more money doing all of that. Yeah. So it's more or less, okay, do I accept the ticket to get a reckless driving, not careless driving, because careless driving puts gives you points on your shit. Reckless, reckless driving. Reckless driving doesn't. It'll just double I the think ticket. You got that reversed. Either way. Yeah. It'll just double the ticket. Okay. You know, so instead of it being a hundred fifty dollar ticket, now it's three hundred dollars. Yeah. And but the thing you have to ask for is um a civil reservation. 
So when I was like, okay, um, he's like, you plead guilty, da da. Like I represent. First of all, they do they do try to push you to get coverage. Like they want you to get like a public defender. Yeah. It's just it's just extra money that goes through the system. But if you know what you're talking about, I did my research and they were like, okay, there's nothing you can do. This is what the, you're going to accept. It's you're all talking to the prosecutor, by the way. You so when I talked to the prosecutor, I was like, I would like to request a civil reservation, mm-hmm. which means the person that I got in an accident with, God forbid, down the line. If they try to claim an injury, that my insurance or me can't pay for it because mm. I claimed guilty to this, not gotcha. this. So now the civil reservation means that they can't make it a civil lawsuit because of that. I'm now protected. Mm-hmm. So when I went to the prosecutor, I was like, um, I'd like to request a civil reservation. She's like, that's something you ask the judge. So I was like, oh, okay, word. So he, I went in, he was like, and this is a Zoom meeting because it's like during the pandemic. Yeah. You're like, or no, actually, no, they still do it Zoom. It's kind of weird. Same with the DMV. Everything's kind of appointment based and mm, okay, very yeah. weird. So I'm in a Zoom call. <laughs> First of all, you motherfuckers that pull up to court in your sweats are so fucking stupid. You people who go to court like hung over and you guys are retarded. You guys are fucking dumb. In these Zoom calls, you got people like, Smoking cigarettes, a bitch drinking a beer. Oh, if it's a Zoom call, I'd practically be naked. No, they can't but like, stop me you can be naked, that. but don't if be. If you show up to court in sweats, you're no, an no, asshole. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you're an asshole. Those are the, the people in the Zoom call that are smoking cigarettes or, oh. and shit are the ones that would be wearing sweatpants at, at court. Oh, okay, yeah. That's what I mean. So, yeah, if, you're so in your ho- and, if you're in your house, dude, smoke it up. And you can up. hear every case, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So you can hear the stupid shit that people are saying and doing. He's like, you, you vote us fucking three hundred dollars for seven years. Can you pay us two hundred today? He's like, I could pay twenty five today. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like funny shit like that. It's it's kind of wild, but um, but he ran through his thing. He's like, do you are you okay with this? Da da. Like everybody else took like five five minutes. Mine was just like thirty seconds. I was like, thank thank you, judge. Uh, can I request a civil reservation? He's like, done. And I was out in 30 seconds. I know that everybody in that Zoom call was like, what, what the, hell the just fuck happened? just happened, dude? <laughs> what, like, cheat code. Yeah, so like that's what I mean. Whatever, depending on your case, you can represent yourself because it's a certain verbiage that they use. Don't say anything extra. They have no emotion. Well, that's what the, the attorneys no, are for, though. Like they yeah. go to, you know, you're paying them because they can they navigate the, the bullshit. Yeah, they they can the navigate shit. the words. They know what the lingo means. They, they, they know how to not fuck you. Most people don't know yeah. how to keep themselves unfucked. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the problem. So yeah, that's a law that, shouldn't be this fucking thick. Yeah, you know, and how yeah. to navigate a trial shouldn't be this thick as far as paperwork goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to be in my situation where a car accident was not my fault, but on the ticket it said it was my fault. Mm-hmm. Now I have to plead guilty. But it's what you, people get confused with. Like I didn't do it. I'm not pleading. No, pleading guilty is the charge that you're accepting to not sure. get another one and just to move the process forward. So like. The difference between careless and reckless is huge because I got a DUI. Mm-hmm. So if I add more points to my fucking shit, my insurance is going to be no. My insurance is going to be way more than I can afford because mm-hmm. it's already expensive from the DUI. So I didn't get any points, but it was a more expensive ticket, which I was able to work. And the civil reservation solidifies that I can't get sued down the line if he has, <laughs> excuse me, an injury, <laughs> an injury in ten years, saying that his back hurts or some shit. True. And my back hurts because of this, and it's like, no, motherfucker, I'm good. You can't mm-hmm. even take me to court. So that's the lesson, motherfuckers. Civil reservation type shit. Like these are little words that you need to know. Judge was just like, okay, stay out of court. Yeah, don't go to court. Stay out of court. <laughs> like don't, yeah, don't, don't do things that bring you there. <laughs> But um, do damn. good things and good things. I kind of want to hear another story. Was that was that AC one the first one? Like which one? No. What was oh the first god, that one? was one. Of, I don't even know anymore, man. Oh wow, they're all it's bl- like yeah, that. N- yeah. It's like so that. you had a phase. I I had a a, a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm an addict. What dude. got you sober? What like what got you sobered up? Rock bottom. Mm-hmm. Rock fucking bottom. Had to get there. Kicking. I mean, the first time I got clean, I was probably just not ready. Mm-hmm. But like, I wanted to prove to myself I could. A couple yeah. months here, stopped. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A couple months here, got, you know, and then. Yeah, and you're fucking with the strong shit. Eventually, you know, life just gets so difficult to maintain normal. Like, you're not at a, at a point, you're not actually getting high. You're just like, I feel like dog shit, and I'm using, I'm doing everything I can. So you don't. To fucking... not feel like dog shit. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the, the partying aspect goes away. Like, the. The friends, fun, the, the fart, camaraderie yeah. goes away, and eventually you're like in a fucking dark ass room, or yeah. you're, or in my case, I was kicking 
something mm-hmm. xanax and probably uh opiates and and, and coke mm-hmm. on a on a jail cell boat you know what i mean Oof. you know just a plastic bin you keep your mattress in and, uh, and, that's, and that's where you're that's where you're like recovering no that's uh. like where you're like fucking dying and you're uh, just yeah. like i don't ever want to do this to myself again and like how mm-hmm. and i wish i could say like that moment stops you but like yeah. you have to hit bottom bottom yeah you know you have to you have to go through the gauntlet and learn you know where your thresholds lie yeah unfortunately you know i'm a hard learner you know what i mean some people can look ahead and be like i know if i go down this path this is what's gonna happen yeah, that's what joe rogan says about coke he was like I, I, he's like i know i would love cocaine yeah. too much well take it Sam from a guy who it. loves cocaine i love coke too <laughs> like, I love cocaine um, see well i moved to arizona when you were 17 I, w- I moved to arizona when i was 18 i turned eight i graduated at 17 mm-hmm. not from cherokee from collingswood okay i moved but um, but I was young, so I turned eighteen that summer. That next May, I moved to Arizona, mm. where my sister lived, and yeah. it was to become a rapper, like literally to find myself as a musician, write different genres, find my voice, literally, because rapping there's this slight different inflection, just like singing happens. Sure. But my point was to literally party my ass off. I lived a block from the University of Arizona and didn't go to school, and talking about Jersey Coke versus Arizona Coke. No, no comparison. This shit is stepped on out here. So, like, when I was experimenting sure. with with peyote and and the cocaine out there, like, I just had a Peyote's plate. Of, I just had a plate of cocaine in my closet, and I would just wake up like a dinner plate. Yeah. <laughs> and I would just wake <laughs> up, do a bump, go work at Ruby Tuesday, yeah. party, go home, write about it. Sure. Wake up the next day and do it. And when you're young, see, I do have a theory about that too. I think people should party young because if you try to party when you're 30 and never did, you're gonna fucking. There's so much pressure on. So there's up. so much pressure on that age, man. Like yeah. you, you, you hear people online talk about it all the time. You, like uh, I think Rain Wilson oh, said shit. it. Rain Wilson said it best. Your twenties are bullshit. Mm-hmm. Your twenties are fucking useless. You're just supposed to try everything and figure out what it is I that agree. you want. I do. Agree. And then your thirties is where you should find out what it whip is that it you want and grind it. Yeah, whip it, grind in the it butt, out, dude. Yeah. Because uh, I'll tell you what, man. I, I just want to enjoy life. I just mm-hmm. want peace. You know. Yeah. I just want to do yeah, things I don't that want I love. Chaos. I do not want chaos. Hmm. You know, and unfortunately, chaos. chaos is gonna find you no matter what. Yeah, you know, your shit's just gonna, shit's just gonna sh- throw itself in your face. This dude is a minus one thousand three hundred fifty favorite. You have to bet one thousand three hundred fifty dollars to win one hundred dollars. What? That's how much of a favorite he is. Oh shit! Do you gamble? So, I, I shouldn't. All right, don't. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> I shouldn't. But, I, I play blackjack at yeah, a casino so, so every now and like again. If it's like minus one hundred and you. You gamble a hundred, you'll win one hundred. Oh. So if it's minus two hundred, you have yeah, to no, gamble two hundred okay. to win one hundred. Got you. He's minus thirteen fifty. So you have okay. to gamble thirteen fifty. So if I want to win some money, I put a hundred dollars on the other dude. And you, then if you put a hundred on the other dude, he's gonna knock him the fuck out. He's probably like plus eight hundred. So if you put a hundred on the other dude, you win nine hundred. It's crazy. <laughs> they look quick as shit. Ooh. It's interesting seeing a heavyweights fight and then little guys like this. Yeah. It's funny as shit, but um, but dude, it was um, yeah. it was a pleasure having you on. I'd love to have you again. Hell yeah, Obviously, dude. we're gonna we're end gonna this. Jo- we're gonna end this, John, and show him uh, show some of his clips if you if you can send me some of. Hell them. yeah, we'll end it with this. But uh, absolutely, but yeah, dude, I love to come on yours, dude. Thank absolutely, you for coming, man. Dustin Yellowitz. It's buggy, y'all. See y'all soon. See ya. Backwards hat, dude. You look very intense right now. Do you have a jersey tattoo on your arm? Yeah. You do? Oh, see, he says it with red. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about your bad life decisions. Come on, we got it. Just Jersey, just the outline. Come on, let's show everybody. Is it topographical? Is there a star over where you were born? Just in case we didn't know the shape of our state. Oh, that's awesome, man. Oh, you're from Berlin? Yeah. It shows, dude. <laughs> Just so you know, Berlin has my least favorite type of person, and this isn't a shot at you, but my, my least favorite type of person in New Jersey is the kind of person who buys decommissioned police cars and then drives around as a fucking daily whip. If you are one of those people, I hope your airbags deploy on your way to work. I hope you shit your pants on the way to church, Satan. All right? I have three fucking felonies. I don't need somebody to pull up behind me and just bargain shot me into a panic attack.